Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Gamma Dai Gamma. So in this video, I would like to do another integral. And this is probably the last video I will make before I leave for the United States of America. Summer is over for me, but I'm I hope everyone else enjoyed it. So to, st to start this discussion, let me write down the integral. It's integral from 1 to infinity of natural log of x squared plus 1 divided by x to the 6th dx. Now, your natural instinct would probably tell you that we have to use the Taylor series for the natural log function because we have natural log of 1 plus some function, which is the right form for the uh, Taylor series expansion. But in this case, the only challenge is the interval of convergence. It, it does not really align itself with the upper and lower bounds of this definite integral. So what we can do here is use the substitution. T is equal to 1 over x. That allows us to have integral from 0 to 1. Natural log of 1 over t squared plus 1. Divided by... 1 over t to the 6th and we have dt over t squared. We can simplify this significantly to give us integral from 0 to 1 natural log of 1 plus t squared minus natural log of t squared divided by 1 over t to the 4th dt. If you don't agree with my step skipping final answer Pause the video, do it yourself. We can use the linearity or the property of the natural log to give t to the fourth natural log of 1 plus t squared dt minus integral from 0 to 1, 2 times natural log of t with the t to the fourth dt. Now, here we can divide both of these guys into two integrals, so i1 and i2. So let's go, let's start with i1. i1 is, now we can expand the natural log using the Taylor series expansion. So let's go ahead and do that. We have t to the 2n, but we have to add 4 because we have a t to the 4th multiplier with it up front dt. Well, there's nothing mysterious going on here. Just interchange sum and integration and then evaluate this. Maybe I can take the end dependence out completely like this. And then sum from n equals 1 to infinity minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n times 1 over 2n plus 5. Now we would like to use partial fraction decomposition right here right now. Otherwise evaluating this infinite sum becomes a near impossible task. So if 1 equals a times 2n plus 5 plus bn, which I can promptly write as n times 2a plus b plus 5a, having no n dependence on the left hand side, that means b is equal to minus 2a and a equals 1 fifth, which means b is negative 2 fifths right away. And now returning back to what we had is i1, one-fifth sum so n equals 1 to infinity minus 1 to the n plus 1 divided by n minus two-fifths sum from n equals 1 to infinity minus 1 to the n plus 1 over 2n plus 5. 
Now the first term in I1 is actually one fifth natural log of two. This is just the alternating harmonic series for which we know the answer. Now I'm going to write this is two over five times capital S. So I'm I'm gonna suck in the negative and I'm gonna also take the infinite sum and then I'm gonna call that S because S is might be a little more tedious than the first term. So let's write some a couple of terms. If we write a couple of terms, we have minus one seventh plus one ninth minus one eleventh and so on. The thing is there's one there's the terms from one that are missing. So the missing terms are one minus one third plus one fifth and we have to subtract that from also because you want to still keep the equality as it is. So you want to still call this S. Now what I'm what I'm highlighting here, we can probably call that S prime. So this is S prime. Now you may recall if, if you're really well versed with all the Taylor series, you may recall this to be the inverse tangent Taylor series where you plug in one. So inverse tangent of one, which is pi over four. Although I'm going to use a little more of a hands-on approach. This is called the Madhava series. It's also an infinite series representation for pi. If you multiply four on both sides, of course. But assuming we only know the Taylor series for the natural log function, there's still a way of doing this. So natural log of one plus i is one i, sorry, plus one half minus i over three minus one fourth, so on. Natural log of one minus i is actually minus i plus one half plus i by three minus one fourth and so on. If we subtract both of them together, then the terms with the, the same signs will cancel off. We can collect a two i outside giving us one minus one third plus one fifth and so on, which is basically S prime. So S prime is one over two i, and then we can use natural log function properties, one plus i over one minus i. To simplify this, we can use the polar representation for complex numbers, giving us root two e to the i pi over four, square root two e to the negative i pi over four, that goes away and uh, we have natural log e to the i pi over 2 which is 1 over 2 i i times pi over 2 giving us pi over 4 of course you can also done this using the inverse tangent function but there we go it's pi over 4, inverse tangent of 1. So we know what the value of s prime is. We can promptly return to what our i1 was. It's 1 fifth natural log of 2 plus, I believe there was a 2 by 5 factor. So 2 by 5 times pi over 4 minus 2 by 5 times those other terms we subtract it. So that's one minus one third plus one fifth. So that's two two thirds plus one fifths. We can simplify all of this to be one fifth natural log of two plus pi over 10 minus 26 over 75. Let's keep it at that. And now we can uh, hopefully try to do what uh, I2. So I2 
we have to use integration by parts and for i2 i will also take the 2 into account so the 2 is also a part of i2 we, we use integration by parts on 2 times integral from 0 to 1 t to the fourth natural log of 2 uh, natural log of t dt and we're gonna get 2 times 2 by 5 sorry t to the fifth natural log of t evaluated 0 and 1 minus 2 fifths integral from 0 to 1 t to the fourth right, I'm skipping steps at 1 obviously it goes to 0 because of natural log of 1 at 0 we need just one step of L'Hopital's rule to tell us this goes to 0 entirely so we have negative 2 over 25 and t to the 5 evaluated from 0 to 1 which is negative 2 over 25 and there we go we can finally combine everything together to give us the value of i you have to just subtract off i2 from i1 so this is i1 and we're subtracting off i2 this simplifies significantly to give us one fifth natural log of 2 plus pi over 10 minus 4 fifteenths, which is supposed to be the final answer. So, this was a really, really nice integral, pretty nifty, pretty quick, not, not anything that we haven't seen before. Uh, just one quick word before I end this we could have approached this using integration by parts from the very beginning integrating 1 over x to the 6th and differentiating natural log in the second term but we would have required uh, again the t equals 1 over x substitution because we have to use the Taylor series somewhere because we're getting natural logs of 2 and i's and, and things like that and it would have also involved lots of um, algebraic manipulations and I think I think you would also require partial fraction decomposition like it or not. Maybe I will make a video about this. Do let me know in the comment section if you encounter any issues with this. I leave this for you. But it should be a lot more quicker, you know, if you know all the algebraic tiny manipulations that you ought to do. Okay, with that, I'm going to end this video and I'm going to see you, all of you, from my dorm room at Cornell, USA. So peace out and stay tuned. Thank you.